In this age of light and fire, simple skills still endure. Hunters embroider signs of war and loss on their cloaks. When an old hunter wears a simple cloak, ask yourself where he got it and what the cloth remembers. The hunter cloak is more than a simple survival tool. It embodies the essence of a hunter. It symbolizes where they have been and where they are going. Welcome back Guardians. Today we are discussing the Hunter Cape, and not just any cape, Shiro Four's cape, and why it has the fallen House of Kings insignia stitched together into multiple pieces. Can I please ask a massive favor before beginning this video? If you enjoyed my Fell Winter video comic book, please upvote it on the Destiny Community Creations page. It would be a massive help to me. A link is in the description. Once again, thank you to Brandon McCammy for providing the original artwork seen at the beginning of this episode. And if you're watching this video in the first two hours of release, I'll be live streaming over on Twitch. Feel free to come and join. This is Marlin Games, and I hope you enjoyed this latest Destiny Lore episode. To understand why Shiro Four's cape has the House of Kings insignia stitched together, we need to first understand a bit about Shiro's backstory, his main role in the Destiny universe. Firstly, Shiro Four is referred to as a Vanguard Scout. This is confirmed in the Shiro Four Grimal card, which reads, Shiro Four is one of the Vanguard's most trusted scouts. Tasked with tracking and eliminating fallen threats, Shiro has traditionally spent most of his time making runs between Earth, Luna, and Venus, gathering intel and engaging in hit and run attacks on active fallen crews. There are a couple of really important pieces of information in this Grimoire card. Firstly, he is one of the most trusted scouts meaning he's not only likely very good at this job, but I assume that he has been doing this for some time. The word scout implies he completes this mission solo, which would make sense for a hunter. They typically venture beyond the walls of the city alone. They are lone wolves. However, the use of the word scout is also slightly misleading. Whilst he completes what I would include as typically scouty missions, such as gathering intel, he also does more than that. He completes hit and run attacks on active fallen crews. So there is a hint that Shiro 4 is more than just a scout gathering intel, but he is actually engaging the enemy. His sidearm, the Trespasser, reinforces this and implies that he also functions as an assassin. The Trespasser Grimoire card reads You are not welcome, unknown. I beg to differ, Shiro 4. Trespasser is Shiro 4's personal sidearm. Kit bashed over the uncounted cycles Shiro 4 spent braving the wilds beyond the city. This light, quick fire shooter has ended more conversations than it has started, and will end many more before the last war is won. The ornaments for Trespasser read Fallen Assassin and Crucible Assassin. There is no doubt in my mind that Shiro 4 is more than just a scout. Information from the Trespasser card implies that he is a skilled assassin, and I assume the reason why he is a trusted scout of the Vanguard is because they send him to kill high-value fallen targets, active fallen crews. One of the reasons to why Shiro 4 may be so proficient at being a scout slash assassin is his resourcefulness his ability to enter the wilds, survive, and still kill his target. This is reinforced by the Shiro 4 card which reads, Shiro willingly aids the vanguard whenever his skills are requested. This selflessness, combined with his talent for tracking, weapons crafting, and combat, makes Shiro an invaluable extension of the vanguard's will beyond the city. Specifically, I want to focus in on the resourcefulness of weapons crafting. Considering Shira is not a weaponsmith, he is considerably skilled in weapons crafting. And as another fellow Destiny YouTuber, Beard Grizzly, has said, just take a look at the Trespasser. It is bits and pieces bashed together, obviously multiple parts from different guns put together to form a lethal weapon. 
Also remember that Shiro actually fabricates the exotic weapons Outbreak Prime, the new Galahorn, and Kvostov. These weapons are not your standard weapons. Both Outbreak Prime and Galahorn are infused with SIVA. Just listen to this paragraph from the Grimoire card Beauty in Destruction, which references Galahorn. The refurbished Galahorn carried into battle by the newest Iron Lord is a melding of new and old. The time-tested Crux and Loma design combined flawlessly with Shiro's modified SIVA tech. Shiro recreated Galahorn, infusing the design with SIVA. He did use the schematics, but the creation of these weapons really emphasized Siva's pragmatic approach to solving problems. Even when creating Outbreak Prime, he says things like, what's the worst outcome? It blows up in your face. So you can imagine this trial and error approach to crafting these weapons, but it perfectly suits his role to venture beyond the wall on a very specific mission dedicated by the Vanguard to survive, to craft weapons as needed and eliminate those high value fallen targets. And of course, Shiro does it with a little bit of cockiness and flair like all hunters. I mean, just take a look at his chess piece, the Lucky Raspberry. The item description reads, No one has ever died wearing me. It's true. She leaves the unworthy before they fall. Shiro enters enemy territory wearing armor that implies that he can't be killed. The armor would have left him otherwise if he was not worthy. The symbolism does not stop there. Have you ever noticed the exotic perk symbol, Be the Danger, which is etched into the handle of the Trespasser? It looks very, very similar to the House of Judgment's emblems. One emblem specifically is called Judgment's Right Hand. Quite fitting for a fallen assassin. Spin four hats on, Shira is eliminating fallen targets for House Judgment, aka Varix. What are you up to, Varix? <laughs> Okay, okay, we, we are getting much closer to understanding Shiro's cape now. We have quite a detailed picture about who Shiro is. Basically, a badass fallen assassin. So why the House of Kings cape? So not only do we need to understand who Shiro was, which is what I've just explained, but we also need to understand what a hunter cape represents. The hunter cape represents many things. The hunter cape, without doubt, is the most important defining feature of a hunter. In fact, checking your cape for damage even comes before checking yourself for bullet holes. The grinder's cloak reads, First you check your cloak for damage, second, inspect yourself for major wounds. Titans and Warlocks may perceive a hunter cape as a simple survival tool, a tool hunters use when exploring the wilds for camouflage and a myriad of other purposes. This is even reinforced by the Dust Walker cloak which reads, a good survival cape can be used as a hull patch, bandage, tourniquet, pressure seal, picnic blanket. However, to a hunter, the hunter cape is not just a survival tool. It represents who they are. It represents a hunter's status, experience and history as indicated by the Night Rain cloak which reads, hunters constantly tweak and upgrade their armor. A cloak is the best mark of recognition. And the cloak of Tecmor reads, When an old hunter wears a simple cloak, ask yourself where she got it, and what the cloth remembers. So just by looking at a hunter's cloak, if you know what to look for, you can understand a hunter's status, history and experience. The hunter cloak is so symbolic of the experience and knowledge of a hunter that it is highly valued and passed down to other hunters. A gesture of passing on years or even centuries of experience and knowledge, both victories and losses. The cloak of solitude reads, the tattered remnants of a lost veteran's cloak, handed down as a reminder and a warning. And this, the hard case cloak reads, if you learn nothing else, learn this, when a hunter takes up the cloak of a den comrade, this is a vow. As you can see, even once a hunter dies, their cloak lives on, representing their history experience, lessons are woven into the fabric. So much so that if you pick up a dead hunter's cloak, you enter a vow, a pledge. Maybe that is one of revenge or something else, something specific to hunters. Given all this information, you would also expect that a hunter cloak represents the enemies they have defeated in battle, a trophy representing their might and strength. This is reinforced by the cloak of Atropos, which reads, 
One boasts goes, when cabals in my cloak they flee. Another goes, look at all these dead cabal. And then a Jari cloak reads, in this age of light and fire, simple skills endure. Hunters embroider signs of war and loss on their cloaks. And don't think that a hunter's cloak is limited to just enemies of the traveller. The All My Victims cloak reads, made from the torn cloaks of other hunters, other lesser hunters. So to summarize, the hunter cloak is not just a survival tool. It is a symbolic representation of a hunter's experience, knowledge, essence, a representation of the enemies they have defeated and a warning to anyone who dares to challenge them. So now we have all the pieces of the puzzle to understand Shiro's cape. It is a patchwork of the House of Kings insignia which implies that primarily Shiro killed, or likely with his backstory, assassinated many fallen from the House of Kings. The stitches, I believe, represent multiple battles, as a cape represents the defeated enemies. I believe this cape speaks many words to the number of encounters that Shiro had with the fallen House of Kings. Maybe this is going too far, but I'll be happy to speak like that each panel was a successful assassination of a House of Kings member. Remember that Fallen also wear capes, including Captains and Kells. In fact, this is even reinforced by the Kell Hunter's hood which reads, Here's my plan to be Kell. Fallen seem to respect violence and big capes. I'm really violent and I found this cape. So does Shiro's cape represent multiple assassinations on members of the Fallen House of Kings? Remember that the House of Kings secretly controlled the House of Devils during the attacks on the city at the Battle of Six Fronts and Twilight Gap. Whilst this is not entirely confirmed, I do think that this speculation is reinforced by the Paskin King Baron card which says, Their power is matched only by their cleverness. They ruled the Devils from the shadows and came too close to toppling the city not once, but twice. For this reason, I honestly expected the House of Kings to make an appearance in Rise of Iron, as the true rulers of the House of Devils. I was shocked not to see more House of Kings lore. However, maybe Bungie did include it. Hiding in plain sight on the back of Shiro 4. The clues were always there, hidden amongst the stitches. House of Kings could not return. Hunters already knew that. Hunters recognized that Shiro wears a House of Kings cape because he has assassinated many of their leaders, leaving the house in disarray. He single-handedly dismantled one of the greatest fallen houses and should be seen as one of the tower's greatest assassins. Thank you for watching. That concludes this latest Destiny Lore episode. P.S. The blue symbol on Shira's cloak. No idea what it represents. I tried searching all the emblems to see if I could find a match. Maybe it's a symbol for the Vanguard Scout. I'm not 100% sure. If you have any evidence for that, please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, if you'd like to support the channel, leave the word assassin to represent Shiro 4, the greatest fallen assassin the tower has ever seen. As usual, it has been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.